Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, horror, sci-fi film called The Stepford Wives. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. At the EBS affiliate conference, reality television executive producer Joanna Eberhardt announces the network's latest reality TV shows that pits men and women against each other. One of the shows features a husband and wife spending a tropical vacation separately to challenge their marriage. It ends with the wife choosing to leave her husband for her sensual tropical paradise. Hank, the husband from the show, appears at the conference, and the audience cheers for the disgruntled man. Heartbroken over his wife leaving him, Hank blames the reality show for ruining his life. Gun in hand, he attacks Joanna on stage until security tackles him down. After the event, Joanna is unharmed and ecstatic, strolling back into the office with a beaming smile. However, Joanna was not Hank's only target. Before he went to the conference, Hank shot his wife and her new boyfriends from the reality show. Given the situation, the network's shareholders and affiliates refuse to be involved with Joanna and her programs. The gravity of the situation dawns on Joanna slowly, her eyes widened and red in tears. Not wanting to lose face, she shakes off her emotions and takes her termination with controlled grace. As she walks down the halls, her facade shrivels. Hidden behind the elevator doors, Joanna finally lets out a shriek. Days later, Joanna's husband, Walter, visits her in the hospital. It turns out Joanna has suffered from a nervous breakdown. After her episode, Walter quits the network in protest for how she was treated. Feeling that her life and mind are falling apart, Joanna decides to move away to start over. With their children, Pete and Kimberly, they move to Stepford, a suburb in Connecticut. The place is a stark contrast from their life in Manhattan and is full of clean-cut lawns and trees. The family arrives at their new home, welcomed by the sunny realtor, Mrs. Claire Wellington. Claire assists the dazed Joanna and the family into the house, giving them a tour of the luxurious space and technology. The house is installed with an electronic system that secures the house, manages the supplies, and even checks their health condition. The house also includes a robot dog that attempts to climb down the stairs but fails. During their first night at the house, Walter watches his wife sleep, worried if their new home would do her well. One morning, Joanna wakes up alone, bewildered as she walks around the house. Claire gives Joanna a tour around the suburb, pointing at the Stepford Men's Association where the male residents meet and the Simply Stepford Day Spa where the female residents enjoy quality time for themselves. Inside, the day spa is disorientingly idyllic, where the women all wear sundresses and speak in near unison. Claire gathers the women for a workout, to which Joanna questions how they could do so in sundresses. The ladies whisper at the thought of allowing their husbands to see them in dark sweat clothes as Joanna wears. The women perform exercises based on household chores which Joanna finds ridiculous. Meanwhile, Walter heads to the Stepford Men's Association, where numerous luxury sports cars and motorcycles are parked outside. Walter is then welcomed inside. On the 4th of July town picnic, Walter and the kids relish the new experience while Joanna is uncomfortable with the suburban lifestyle. A group of women approach the couple and give suggestive compliments on Walter. Their conversation is interrupted when Joanna finds a familiar face, writer Bobby Markowitz, and her husband, Dave. They also meet a renowned architect, Roger Bannister, and his partner Jerry Harmon. Claire gathers everyone for square dancing, in which Joanna and Bobby are forced to participate. Despite their initial apprehension Joanna starts having fun until a woman named Sarah spins uncontrollably while repeating the song over and over. Her spin goes faster and faster until she abruptly stops and collapses. Joanna squeezes through the crowd to assist while the rest watch, dumbfounded at the incident. Within the crowd emerges Mike Wellington, who asks Walter to pull his wife away from the scene. The men shuffle in front of Joanna, blocking her view. She takes a peek between the men's feet and sees Mike press something that causes a spark on Sarah's head. Mike orders the men to assist Sarah out and into his vehicle, ignoring Joanna's insistence that she needs to be taken to the hospital. The party continues as if nothing happened while Joanna continues to argue that Sarah needs more help. The Wellingtons assure her that Sarah will get all the help she'll need before turning away. That evening, Joanna continues to argue about Sarah, despite Walter receiving news from her husband that she's okay. Joanna raises her other suspicions against Mike and the townspeople, but Walter has had enough. Tired of her snide attitude and obsession with control, Walter threatens to divorce her. Defeated, Joanna apologizes and admits her faults. The couple reminisces of old times and how their jobs at the network drove a gap between them. Their stories rekindle their bond. As they put their past behind them, Joanna and Walter agree to embrace the country life in the suburbs. As part of this new lifestyle, Joanna changes her dark clothes to sundresses as she embraces the life of a housewife. Bobby and Roger aren't on board with her new style, however. As the two talk about the other women, Joanna gets the idea of visiting Sarah to see if she's okay. The three head to Sarah's house, but no one answers. Finding the door unlocked, they go inside and listen to Sarah's loud moans and piercing shrieks of pleasure. The three hide behind a wall as Sarah heads down to the kitchen. Roger finds a smooth gadget with Sarah's name engraved on it. He presses buttons randomly, not noticing Sarah pausing abruptly and her chest inflating as he does. Bobby and Joanna finally convince him to leave, and they run outside, laughing. 
The three retreat to Bobby's house, where Joanna and Roger gasp at its chaotic state. Roger opens up about his unstable relationship with Jerry, leading all three of them to admit how they've moved to Stepford to fix their family problems. Inspired by her talk with Walter, Joanna suggests that they all embrace the suburban life in Stepford. At the Men's Association Club, the men battle with remote-controlled cars. After winning the game, Walter smokes a cigar as he shares his thoughts on the peaceful life in Stepford and the other men's lovely wives. Meanwhile, Joanna, Bobby, and Roger attend the Stepford Book Club, where the other wives beam at them, making the three uncomfortable. Adamant on changing her life, Joanna breaks the silence and brings up the biography she just finished of former President Lyndon Johnson, earning no reaction from the club. Instead, Claire introduces a Christmas craft book that the crowd applauds at, including Roger. When the club focuses on her Jewish religion, Bobby becomes defensive and sarcastically mimics their enthusiasm, silencing the others. Claire brushes it off, but Bobby continues to joke at their expense. At the men's club, Walter shares how Joanna agreed to change and make their home at Stepford more peaceful. The other men, however, are unconvinced. Upon Mike's insistence, Ted calls upon his wife to pay Walter the winning money for their game earlier. Ted's wife places his ATM card in her mouth and withdraws cash from her mouth. All the other men approach Walter expectantly as the truth dawns on him. The lovely Stepford wives are cyborgs. One evening, Joanna bakes dozens of cupcakes for Kimberly's day camp. Dave and Bobby visit, but Dave quickly leaves with Walter for the men's association. Suspicious, Bobby tells Joanna to get a babysitter so they can follow. At the club, Jerry brings Roger, who makes sarcastic comments about the association. Mike sways the comments, assuring them that they welcome their relationship. Outside, Joanna and Bobby see the curtains closed, raising Bobby's suspicions further. Upon Bobby's insistence, they climb into an open window, alerting the men downstairs. Bobby turns on the light and finds various family portraits of the Stepford residents. Hearing footsteps, they shut the lights and hide. A figure in the dark approaches, shutting his flashlight off. To their surprise, it's Roger playing tricks on them. He allows them to escape as the other men walk up the stairs. With the girls gone, Roger lies to Mike and the rest, claiming that no one was there. Jerry directs Roger to enter one of the rooms where he finds something that worries him. Two days later, Bobby knocks on Roger's house, searching for him as he hadn't contacted them since the night at the men's association. They check the garbage cans, finding some of Roger's valuable clothing and collections. At the town assembly, Joanna and Bobby finally see Roger, who's announced to be running for state senate. Joanna and Bobby's jaws gape upon seeing a clean-cut Roger wearing a suit, in contrast to his usual flamboyant style. Bobby asks Roger if his relationship is happy, to which Roger says yes, now that he understands he doesn't need to be flamboyant and sensitive. As the crowd cheers for Roger, Joanna realizes that Bobby is right, something is wrong in Stepford. Afraid, Joanna insists on leaving Stepford at once, arguing that the idyllic life in Stepford is not normal. When Walter refuses, she threatens to leave with their children with or without him. She tries to leave the house, but the automated system has the door locked. Walter unlocks the door for her but stops her by promising that they will leave together tomorrow. That evening, Joanna wakes up to the robot dog whimpering. The dog hands her a remote control with her name engraved on the handle. Frightened, Joanna researches the other women in Stepford and discovers that they were all successful women in high positions before moving to the suburbs. She also reads an article on a missing champion terrier, whose features are similar to the robot dog. Walter discovers her in the office, and Joanna waves his worries away, claiming to be researching an apple pie recipe. With the revelation, Joanna heads to Bobby's house the next day. The once chaotic house has turned into a spotless and cozy home. Bobby, now blonde and in a Sunday dress, welcomes Joanna to her home. Bobby hands her sons their customized lunch, filled with their requests. When one boy is disappointed about a missing action figure, Bobby happily gives him $500 as compensation. With the boys gone, Joanna explodes with her worry over Bobby and her discovery about the other women. Bobby, however, focuses on tidying up the place in bliss. Joanna freaks out over Bobby's new look in life and insistence that Joanna should change the same way. Tears of fear in her eyes, Joanna watches Bobby's hand touch open flames on the stove, but Bobby doesn't even flinch. Joanna rushes away and drives to pick up her children from camp but learns that Walter had taken them already. Joanna checks back home and finds that no one is there. She heads to the men's association, determined to retrieve her children. The club is dark and quiet, alerting Joanna to be cautious. A portrait of her family sits near the entrance, but she's replaced with a blonde version of herself. With thunder rumbling outside, Joanna searches for the men, unwilling to be taken down. The men gather around her, cornering her. Walter emerges, listing down all the insecurities he's felt since meeting Joanna. Much like the other men of Stepford, Walter is tired of being undermined by his wife. Joanna accuses the men of killing their wives over their selfish jealousies, but Mike corrects her that they're merely perfecting them. Mike presents a promotional video explaining the female improvement system. The system inserts nanochips into the women's brains and enhances their appearance to their husband's ideal women. Joanna points out how the women are turned into slaves, but they agree that it's what they want. Joanna wonders if these robotic wives can truly love their husbands, making Walter think. Mike presents a robot body, the prototype for Joanna's replacement. Hoping to change her husband's mind, Joanna kisses him, reminding him of their love. But Walter moves forward with the process. 
Tearfully, Joanna relents and joins Walter as the platform descends, accepting her fate to be changed into Walter's ideal wife. The next day, the Stepford wives shop for groceries in beautiful dresses, greeting each other in delightful harmony. Among them is Joanna, now with long blonde hair, blending in with the rest of the wives. One evening, the Wellingtons host a formal ball, crowning Joanna and Walter as the guests of honor. Clad in a white suit and a pristine silver dress, the couple enters the ballroom surrounded by the applause of their neighbors. The Stepford men and wives dance to the Midsummer Night's Waltz, appearing like a ball in a fairy tale. A girlish Joanna changes partners and dances with Mike while Walter asks Claire for champagne. As Claire fetches the drinks, however, Walter sneaks into the laboratory. The system warns as Walter steps into a restricted area, not meant for the Stepford husbands. In a large room, countless glass models of feminine figures surround Walter. When he approaches one, the system activates, reacting to him. He presses all the buttons, activating the microchips of one of the Stepford wives. Walter continuously presses buttons, effectively overloading the system and deactivating the Stepford programming. He does the same for the other systems. Upstairs, while Joanna leads Mike into the garden, the woman linked to the system Walter deactivates snaps out of control. She faces her husband, fury in her eyes. As Walter overloads the system, more and more wives break free from mind control, including Bobby and Roger. Claire walks back to the ballroom, witnessing the chaos of the awakened wives unleashing their fury over their husbands. Hysterically, Claire fetches Mike from the garden and back into the ballroom. The husbands beg Mike for help, and he instructs them to use their remote controls, but it doesn't work. Joanna approaches Mike in her fake sing-song voice, only to drop the act. Walter never implanted her with the nanochips. The revelation quiets the arguing couples. Walter refused to turn his wife into a science project, earning Joanna's full respect. Mike and the other men rage over Walter's decision. Mike grabs a candlestick to attack Walter, but Joanna swings another candlestick against his head. The whole crowd quiets as Mike's robotic head snaps off his neck. Claire falls to her knees, mourning over the Stepford husband she's worked so hard for. She attempts to place the head back on her husband as she mourns for her project. Claire orchestrated everything in Stepford in the hopes of creating the perfect community where men are men and women are lovely and cherished. A world of romance and beauty. Before Stepford, Claire was just like Joanna and the rest of the wives, overworked successful women who were underloved. She was a renowned brain surgeon and genetic engineer, leading a busy life until she found her husband, the real Mike, cheating on her with her research assistant. After eliminating them, she created the robot Mike, her perfect husband whom other men will respect. Then, she created Stepford, a world in her perfect image. She changed the wives, and her next step was to change the husbands as well. Delirious with her lost love, Claire kisses robot Mike's severed head, only to be electrocuted. The town gasps as Claire falls on the floor, weak yet still alive. She crawls back to her robot husband's head, cradling it next to her face as she accepts her fate. Six months later, Joanna, Bobby, and Roger are interviewed by Larry King, discussing their success after Stepford. Joanna made a documentary about Stepford that won six Emmys, Bobby published a best-selling poetry book, and Roger won a seat at the state senate. Joanna and Walter's marriage have taken a positive turn, finally accepting that perfection was not ideal. Meanwhile, the Stepford husbands are still in Stepford under house arrest. Now, they do the household chores while the women are in control of the community. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.